Pittman Adventures. And man, am I stoked. Am I excited. Am I thrilled to see my friend Roy Rose on the Royal Polaris. Roy, how the heck are you? I'm doing good. We're just finishing up a nice trip we just had. Oh, my God. That is an understatement. You know, the name Roy Rose has become synonymous with the Royal Polaris and all the excellent catches you've made over the years. you got to be getting old. How, how long have you been on that rig? Like 30 years or something? It's been, it's been 30 years. It's been a lot of fun catching a lot of fish. <laughs> I know, man. You have so many fans. I know so many people who love fishing with you. So, you know, Roy, we actually have people uh, a lot in Southern California, but we actually have people around the world. So they're going to be amazed to hear just about when you left San Diego, how long this trip was, and where you were fishing. Can you fill us in on that? Where, how long of a trip is this? Uh, we started just looking around, trolling for water. We beat the Wahoo up that day. Man, we had 56 that day. And then uh, later in the afternoon, usually that's when we like to put the kite out. We put the kite out. We had some dead flyers and figured out where we wanted to try. We put them out, and we got a 180-pounder, another one about 170. Then the, the then it was dark, but we had a lot of, lot of shark issues and stuff, so we had to kind of skirt the sharks. Um, but anyway, we, we made a couple, we made a nice tank of flyers, made a nice live, uh, live flyers, went up, set up. We didn't mess with the Wahoo. We, uh, set up for the current that was there and, uh, just started scratching away on the kite. It was an afternoon bite and we were catching anywhere from two to hundred pounders a day. Very good fishing. We wow. had, uh, go ahead. Uh, we had uh, our best day. I think we had three, but we had two days, I think, of three. But basically one to three a day. And we had 15 for the trip. We just got one this morning. Uh, we just got one 224. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Finished Absolutely. out with 15 for the season. Plus we got one over three, which is in that 15. Wow, what an incredible trip. And for some reason, we've lost your... I can hear you just fine, Roy, but we can't see you anymore. I want to see your gorgeous hair one more time. You might, <laughs> Roy, you might see an X on your box there. You can click that, and then you can re-add yourself if you want, or we'll just listen to your lovely voice. But Isaac is joining us. He says this is fantastic to hear from Roy Rose. And uh, Mackie's on here. He said um, that he is stoked to hear from you also. That is some incredible yellow pinch in a fishing that you've got going on, Roy. And I don't know how it can get much better. Are you still with us, Roy? Yeah, I'm still here. I can okay. see you fine. You're you're I see you perfectly. I know I you're see gonna see my mug. I'm stuck and I'm frozen. Oh <laughs> well, who knows what that's all about. Well we could still hear you and that's the most important thing. So 18 days. Some people say to themselves, 18 days on a fishing boat, that's an awfully long time, but my God, the accommodations, the food, everything, it's spectacular on the Royal Polaris, right? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, the way that the way that it's structured, you know, like like this trip, we messed around on the way down. We fished Aleo's Rocks. We got a few yellowtail for dinner. We, we stopped. And, you know, sometimes, depending on what time I need to get to the bank or what time I want to get there, this time I kind of wanted to get down there quick because no one's – it's been uh, – I had a little rest for some Wahoo. So we kind of just blew through the rocks. But like on the last trip, we ended up, we fished the rocks on the way back. And we had excellent yellowfin tuna fishing on that 30 to 50 pound yellowfin. And we had very good yellowtail fishing. And, and, and a lot of times we'll do that on the way down to break up the ride down. We'll, we'll fish there for three hours, four hours, break up the ride. You know, guys fish, throw on some for a meal. You get a bunch of nice yellowtail. You know, it makes for a nice, a nice variety. Oh yeah, man, that sounds absolutely fantastic. So, Roy, how many fish do you have over a hundred pounds, two hundred pounds on this trip? Oh my goodness, like there's fifth, there's fifteen over two. One of which is a, a three fifty eight. Daryl Shelborn got that. 
Wow. We've got another handful of 190 to 195s. We've probably got over 20 that are over 180 to 189. And who, who I mean, it's a lot. There's a couple hundred fish. Uh, it's a lot of fish. I don't, we don't usually keep track of the 100 pounders, but there's a lot of them. There's, 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 we got a very nice load of fish on here. And uh, there's a lot of 100, everyone on the boat has a fish at least over 150 pounds a piece. Everyone did that, so it was very successful in that in that arena. Oh my God, are you kidding me? That is fantastic. Would you rate this as? Oh man, I mean, you've had so many great trips in 30 years, Roy. I mean, would you rate this as up there with like one of the top 20 or something like mm. that? This is phenomenal. No, it, it, it was good for this year. No, we, we've had some that have been a little, well, a lot better. But, no, this is very good. I mean, we, we had another trip in January where we had 17 over two, and we had a 320 on that trip. So we just missed it by two on this one. But, no, we were fortunate enough to have two trips where we got into the double digits on those 200-pounders. We were very grateful for it. We've got uh, listeners saying this is the best captain ever, Roy Rose. Another gentleman chiming in right now saying it's evening time here in Belgium. I'm loving this interview. Roy, you're going international, man. I love it. <laughs> oh, William, that's good. They make good beer over there. <laughs> and uh, another gentleman, and I'm sorry, I can't read the names that well. Uh, in the glare here, but he says, talk about the voice of experience, Captain Roy Rose. Roy, that is so true. And what makes you such an exceptional person? I haven't seen you for a while, but I know that if I bumped into you, you're always so warm and loving and friendly. And man, that means the world. And you treat all your passengers that way. I know that makes a big difference. Yeah, no, every trip's like a like a family reunion. In, in all honesty, I mean, you get you know, you get to know everyone from all the years. They keep coming back over and over, and it's like it's like y'all got together for the weekend to go fishing. Obviously, it's a little longer than that, but those are the type of uh, relationships you know, you've been on a boat for so long that you build up with people. Did you have any heartbreak stories on this trip? Any really big fish that came to Gap and maybe the the hook uh, pulled or? Or you lost a fish, anything like that on this trip that you remember? Yeah there, there, yeah, there were several fish that, you know, you hooked them. They took out three, 400 yards of line. And then after half an hour, the hook pulls, you know, that that's common. I'd say we did that at least, at least four or five times that happened throughout the trip. Um, it's very, it's very common. And yeah, it's like, damn, I wish I could have seen that one, you know, but, <laughs> you know, you can't, I guess you can't see them all. Yeah, we'd like to. I know that is for sure. So on these trips, now you'll go back into Cabo San Lucas, am I right? And guys will fly home, and then they'll meet the boat when it's back in San Diego. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, we're gonna drop them off, and then we'll we'll take the boat back up the line. It'll be there. Take just call it a three day run back, two and a half, three days. Hopefully the weather's nice, and uh, we'll get get the fish and all their tackle back home safe. That sounds good. Oh yeah, no, I, I'll, I'll, I do a, wherever, whenever I'm scheduled, I'm on, I'm on here. So, um, yeah, there's, I'm scheduled for several of those trips, and yes, there, there, there are quite a few new three-day trips on the books for this year. Another gentleman, 5 a.m. in Australia. Oh, my God. Roy, we're going totally international, man. This is We're going to have to take our show on the road or something. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's, that's good stuff. Good. Yeah, so uh, you're going to drop those guys off and then head back. Now, hey, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this question. Are you worried about what is going on up in the local area on the Blue Fantana? Or do you just think, hey, no big deal, man. They're going to be back. No, they'll be around. They're just they're just doing what they do. They disappear. I mean, they'll 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 be up off of San Clemente and all that before you know it. Like they never disappeared. Like I said, fish pretty much. Uh, personally, I don't think they ever leave. They just 
they're between up there in the local area by by San Clemente, and they go down towards maybe the Rosa Bank and back up. But it it never like totally disappears. I think we just stop fishing for it. I mean, the guys that come out and wrap them in January, they roll out every January and knock it out. You know, it isn't like it's uh, a big mystery. They just follow the water charts, get on them, and uh, get what they need to get and leave them alone for us. Yes, sir. Daniel Lightfoot says, good afternoon, Phil and Roy. He's another great uh, Freeman Adventure family member. I'm really enjoying your presentation here. Hey, a guy asked me a question. I don't have the answer to it. I know you would, Roy. He asked me, with the sonars that you guys have, how deep can you see those bluefin tuna? Can you see them at like 150 fathoms, 200 fathoms? You can set it like for on here, if it's for that nighttime fish, if you're driving around and you're marking, let's say you're driving around, you're marking them at 80 fathoms and you're not getting anything. Let's say you're, you're sweeping at 500 feet, 24 degrees, which will give you a, I forget what it is. It's like 220 feet down. You can just tilt it down as far as you got to go to hit them. This thing will go 1,200 feet. Um, it's a little slower, but you'll you'll still hit fish. We don't usually do that. Usually you'll, you'll bump out the range to 600 feet or 700 feet if you're in an area where there's big schools and tilt it down 20, 22 degrees and sweep. And if you're bumping into fish, like I said, you're seeing them. 80 to 100 fathoms, you'll be able to hit them, no problem. If you are joining us right now, I know you can't see Captain Roy Rose. You're stuck with looking at my ugly mug here today. But we'll figure this out for future interviews because this is just one of many to come. You're listening to Roy Rose live from the Royal Polaris, an incredible 18-day trip that he has just finished up with a fish that went, how big, 350-something, did you say, Roy? Three, it was 358. It was caught on a PL-68, which is essentially a rock cod lure with a big hook on it, without the treble hook. That's, it's got a big giant 7691 on it. That's freaking amazing. What would you tell anglers was the most effective way to catch yellowfin tuna on this trip? What was the best way? Was it the kite, or what was it? This trip was the kite. There's a lot of kite. We had, I think, three days where we got them. It was, very, it was decent fly line fishing. Uh, but all the better fish came off the kite, and if there weren't as many sharks in the water, we would have done well on, on. Uh, we would have had more people burning the jigs at night. We would have had guys soaking skipjack and small tuna, which is very effective for that bigger fish. But you know, it, it's kind of frustrating when you look in the water and you see four or five sharks cruising around, and then you you know you drop your lure and you hook a shark. So. You gotta, you gotta have some stick to itiveness. You gotta just tell yourself, you know what? I'm just gonna keep catching these stupid things till I hook a tuna, which is what uh, some of these guys did. They kept some guys lost three, four lures, and they all of a sudden they got a 200 pound tuna on the line, you know. And, and my hats off to them. You know, it's like it isn't easy reeling them, those, you know, the sharks in and all that other stuff, but. Uh, like this one guy, Kevin Shannon, he had three over two. And one passenger got up at 345, dropped his lure and got a 220-pounder. And he goes, I was outperformed today. He goes, I'm going to get up at 3 o'clock tomorrow, and I'm going to catch one of those. And he did it. He did it yesterday, uh, day before yesterday. He got a 202. He caught four sharks, lost two lures, lost two sets of uh we got a shark cutter, so we cut the, what do you call those? Those assist hooks off. Yeah. He was down to his last lure with the last hook on it, and he got that 202. And, God. and he earned that son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Roy, how much of this is persistence? How much of this is being at the rail, working hard? The, this, this is a lot of that, a lot of what you just said. It's at the rail at the right time. Like in the middle of the day when there's nothing going on, there's nothing going on in the kite and we're catching a bunch of junk, yeah, take your nap. But if you're serious about, okay, you know what? The prime times are gray light. Gray light meaning, you know, when the sun's popping up. But I, I tell the guys, if you're serious about this and you want to get a big fish, you start at 4 in the morning, you start burning that PL-68, 
there's no sharks. You catch a small 10-pound yellowfin tuna or a skipjack. You got your big bait rod ready to go, which is a 200-pound outfit with a 20-0 circle or a 12-0-76-91. Pin that thing on, drop it over the side, and hang on. Oh, my God. That sounds so cool. So you guys are literally fishing with baits that some people would uh, like to uh, catch and throw in their sack pretty much, right? Oh, yeah. No, they do. They do catch them and throw them in their sacks. <laughs> but out here, uh, like I said, I've seen them eat 12-pound tuna, no problem. Like, oh, man, you're not going to get a bite on that. It's like, <laughs> watch this. Throw it over <laughs> the side. The guy's got one on within 30 seconds, you know? Oh, that is fantastic, man. That is what an adventure. How far is Hurricane Bank from San Diego? Oh, it's like just under a thousand miles. And uh, your weather on the trip, how was that? It was uh, it was better when it was windy. It turned into a lake here the last few days that we couldn't get the kite out, but it was we had a, we had about five days of eighteen knots, fifteen to eighteen knots, and that's when we had our best fishing. Once it got really calm. It uh, wasn't as good. Funny how that but, works, huh? Yeah, no, I got grease calm, and it's like, it's literally, it's like you're in your bathtub or at a lake. I mean, there's no, it's just, it's like the doldrums. It's like literally like this, you keep the kite, you let the kite out, the balloon, it goes straight up. There's no current. So, uh, luckily, there was some wahoo moved in, so we took advantage of that for a couple of days. Had very good wahoo fishing again, so that was nice. Hey, we've got some crazy people on here, like me, but uh, we've got guys asking you, what have you heard about Albuquerque? Have you heard anything about that, Roy? And I guess I could ask you the question also, uh, are they ever coming back? What do you think? No, they'll be back. It just depends on the, the water currents, the water structure. It's not it's not the water, the river of water that those fish are in or the body of water. It's, it's, it's cutting off up there towards Washington and up there. The main body, it does, it's not coming down here. Eventually, it, it'll break the pattern. It'll come all the way down. My dad used to have these pilot charts, and he would show me where the currents would come down, they would sweep from up north and come down and swing up from Geronimo, go down and out and up. And that's where we had all that really good albacore fishing back in the old days. And you look at those pilot water charts now, and it's it's not the same. But you can look at the correlation between those charts and when we've done extremely well on the albacore when they come down here. Um and with what's going on now, with with it, it it's just not. It's just it, the water's not making its way down here. At the bottom line, it's not coming down. Here, it's staying up there for whatever reason. And when it changes, we'll take advantage of it. It's it's all about the oceanography, right, Roy? That's it. That's exactly it. It's like a Leo's rock. You know, as soon as we started catching all that. Yellowfin tuna up there at Guadalupe back when we could fish it, the rocks pretty much dried up. The rocks were was was phenomenal yellowtail fishing for I mean yellowfin tuna fishing for years and years and years and then all of a sudden Guadalupe got hot. And all I, I personally feel that body of fish that used to go to the rocks started going, it just the currents pushed it up into that Guadalupe Bay, that Guadalupe area. And uh you notice that used to be a good area for big bluefin tuna. There's no more big bluefin there. It's all yellowfin tuna now. But eventually, it's cyclical. It'll it'll turn back around one of these days if we ever get a chance to try it again. But who knows? That bluefin will move in. The yellowfin will move out. Who knows? But it's all, like I said, it's all current-driven. Roy, we've talked a lot about the phenomenal bite you've had on yellowfin tuna. How was your wahoo bite? Was it good? Oh, it was very good. We got uh, a little over 200 on here for the trip. It was very good. We were able to scratch them on the anchors, uh, troll. Uh, we had a couple of nice days of trolling for them. You know, days that it was slow on the tuna or just didn't seem right, we'd pick it up and troll around. We had... Uh, we had a day for 50, a day for 56, a day for 30, a day for 
17. I just, it was just a bunch. I got it all written down. But uh, it was good wahoo fishing and nice fish. And uh, we've got some guys who are curious about catching wahoo and asking, best way to catch a who and how do I rig up for it? What do you tell them? I just tell them to use, uh, if we're going to be casting, can like casting bombs, they got the 90 pound wire on them, they're ready to go. And when the fish bites it, it's got a mouthful of hook and not a piece of metal. I know a lot of guys like regular casting iron. It's all, it, it all works good, but like for the rent rods while I'm here, I just tell them, you know what, just use this bomb because when they grab it, all they're grabbing is a mouth. Like I said, they attack that mylar, and all the, the only thing there that their mouth grabs is a hook. Everything else collapses, and they got a straight big hook in their mouth. It seems to be the most effective that I've, you know, for me, at watching people catch them. That's what makes that one. I'm not going to say it's idiot proof, but it's pretty damn effective. You're still going to lose them. Don't get me wrong. They make everybody look bad, but they're, they once they get that bomb in their mouth, it's pretty, uh, it's, uh, it, your chances go way up by landing them. And another thing is you got to have, a 50 pound minimum 50 or 60 pound line less stretch better hook set you don't want to be using 40 pounds you're not worried about casting it 100 blocks away from the bow you're just going to underhand it let it sink get it down at a 45 degree angle and wind it back as fast as you can you'll expose that lure to more fish when they grab it remember not to set the hook and just wind till the line starts coming off the reel then you set the hook what a wealth of information you're sharing with all our viewers here. I deeply appreciate it. You know, one thing about who they are so freaking fast. It seems like we've all done this before. If you fish Wahoo, you hook one in the stern, and all of a sudden he's way up in the bow. Before you know it, you got to put your track shoes on. <laughs> well, we had a lot of that going on this trip. Yeah, you'll see the line go, and then all of a sudden it goes, rooster tailing back up the other side. All you can do is yell, hey, watch out for, watch out for the anchor line. Cause, yeah, I've seen that line. You know, Wahoo gets going, goes hauling up the side, and they'll cut that anchor. They'll cut that Samson braid, and when it comes out of the water where, where, the line, where, the, where the line goes through, it's like you took a torch and melted it. It goes through the water that fast, that mono or that spectra. It just seals it. It's incredible. Pretty crazy stuff. From Australia, Labworks wants to know, did you catch any big yellowtail on this trip? Did you get a chance to fish for those? We, on the way down, you know, it's kind of windy. And no, we, we got a couple for dinner, like maybe a 25, 30 pounder, another one a little smaller, maybe 18, 20 pounds. Uh, we didn't really spend that much time targeting them. We had a couple other ones get away. But like I said, I was kind of in a rush. I wanted to get down here and... Uh, Check this bank out. Get started on the trip. Yeah, you were pretty much straight line, and it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. All right, good stuff. Um, Roy, what is the season for these long trips? When does it start? When does it end? I'm talking about the, the calendar month. The calendar month, for us, we start our first long trip in uh, January, and then it ends here in April. I know some guys go in, in November or December, um, but for us, that's when we started. But I know there's other boats that'll go a little earlier, and um, and it's kind of hit and miss just because of the water temperature. A lot of times the water could be too warm. I know a couple guys, or one boat in particular that had two trips, they tried to make it down there, and the water was just too hot. And they, they got stuck up here because they would have killed all their bait. and So it wouldn't have been good. <clears throat> Roy, I got to tell you, we're going to have to do this more often. By the way, I might be able to get you back on here on the video. So don't go anywhere. But um, before I try that, and in case I lose you, once again on the Royal Players, do you have any more of these long trips in the future? Or are you guys done with these? No, we're done. We're starting boat work now. We're starting our maintenance. Well, what a way to go out with this incredible trip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's a good feeling and a nice time. Man, it's so nice to hear your voice. All right, so 
If I lose you, Roy, thank you so much. But don't go anywhere. I want to see if this brings your, your video back, and then we can say goodbye to you in person. But thank you for your time. Thank you for all the great trips on the Royal Players, including this one. Another great trip, Roy. All right. Thank you. We got to look you again. <laughs> don't go anywhere. Let me see if – no, that didn't work. Okay. I figured out what that was. Roy, good to have you on the show, and we'll do it again really, really soon, my friend. All right, you got it. We'll see you later, Phil. Take care, Roy. Bye-bye.